Hey you guys, it's Patrice with Trinity Boutique and I am back because of course I have been out of pocket for so long and I'm finally back and I'm finally trying to get back into creating for y'all full swing. I have been doing so much lately. Um, just a quick life update. So I went back to Aryan school and I just finished this past August. And so I'm trying to get my life back together, trying to get back in the swing of things, trying to get back connected with my first love, which is crafting. So today I just have something quick for y'all. Just going to show you how to um, create a monogram doormat. So if this is your first time here, um, take a look at some of my other videos, which I haven't done as much as I would like to. But if my content helps you in any way, I definitely want you to hit that subscribe button. And if this video helps you, make sure that you give me a thumbs up. And do not forget to turn on your notifications so that you know each time that I post a video for you. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how I created this doormat. So let's get into it. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a monogram look on a doormat. Like so. So I want to start from the very beginning. Um, just in case some of you are new to um, using your silhouette, you may not know like the different features. But for today, we're just going to create a monogram look. So let me figure out how to get this. Okay, so I'm back. I was trying to um, make sure that my full screen showed um, on your screen. So I had to adjust my screen a little bit more for you guys. So today we are going to <clears throat> create this Frasier doormat. So we're going to start out by coming over here to this left side. Um, click on your A. That's how you're going to add. Um, we're going to click F for Fraser, And we're just going to enlarge it. But I do want to go back a step. I want to make my space larger. I want to set it to the, the same amount of area that I'm going to be painting for my doormat. So for this particular doormat, it's an 18 by 30. So you're going to come over here to your page setup panel. And you're going to just adjust your size. So for the width, my mat's 18 by 30. So we're going to do 30 and 18. So now that we have the correct size for our mat, I'm going to change the font for this. So I'm going to go to the top and I'm just going to scroll and I want to do Times New Roman because it kind of has like the monogram, the perfect monogram look once you finish this, you're going to see exactly what I mean. So I'm going to ungroup this so we can get the true size and then we want to just enlarge it. We want to get as big as we can, but we don't want to get too big for now because we'll have to readjust the size once we split our letter and add the last name to go in between the two pieces of the letter. So in order to split this letter, you're going to go over here to the left side to your drawing tool, select the rectangle. Now you just want to draw a rectangle small enough to go through the middle of this F. So that way, when you split your letter, you still have a little bit of each side left on the letter. So this is what I mean. You want to have a little bit of room left on the top and the bottom of the rectangle. So now <clears throat> you want to select all of that, come over here to your modify panel and you're going to subtract and that's going to split your letter for you. So now we have two separate pieces. You can use this as it is and just kind of like add your word to the middle and I'll just kind of give you some examples before I actually do what I'm going to do. But some people like for it to just look like this. So if you just want it to look like this, you can maybe play with some of your fonts. And just kind of see how it looks. You can resize it. But let's just see what a different font will look like going through that letter. See, that would be perfect. 
But for the look that we're going for, this cursive writing or the script font is not going to work. And let me show you why. So come back over here to your shapes panel and select your rectangle again. And you're going to need two rectangles. So first, figure out what size rectangle you need. You want the top of the rectangle. And let me zoom in so you can see. You want the top of the rectangle to be just above the line of the letter. That way, when you weld these two together, you have a good amount of space to create that um, split letter look with your block in the middle. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out so I can add the second piece. So I'm just going to hit Control C and Control V to get a second rectangle. Instead of trying to duplicate that one and draw another one, I'm just going to copy and paste it. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> place it over the same area on the bottom half of my F. You may need to kind of zoom in so you can see or and judge whether or not the rectangles line up, and they don't. So we're going to select this one, and we're just going to move it over a little bit. Just kind of play with it and see where you need it to be. And I think that looks great. So now you want to select everything. And I'll zoom back out so you can see how it will look. And then you can right click and weld. Now you have your F, the monogram with the split letter, and you have your line between. Now, this is what I was saying about not wanting to make your letter too big because, I mean, fill your space up too much because if you do, then it's going to run off, off of your print area or your cut area. So now we want to go in and add our last name. For this look, I generally like to just go with all capital letters and select um, just a regular old font. So to keep it uniform, I'm just going to go with Times New Roman again. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to ungroup and regroup so that I can get the true size of my word. And now I'm just going to fill up my space. You can make it big. You can make it small. You can do it however you like. And now what I want to do next is I want to select all and group. And now I just kind of want to fill up my space a little bit more. I'm an extra girl. I like for my stuff to be big and bold. So I'm going to enhance, well, enlarge this a little bit more so that I don't have as much open space left on each side of my mat once I'm done adding my design. So the mat is 30 inches wide. So I think I want to go at least about 20 to 21 inches. And it's not going to look distorted because once you get this on your mat, you're going to see exactly what I mean. Like it, it's going to look very well on your mat. The F won't look distorted at all. So we'll go about 20, a little over 21 inches. So now that I have my finished look, if you're creating this design and you want to send it to a customer before you actually cut it and paint it, you can just go right over here to your um, fill panel has all of your colors available. You select whatever color the customer wants, snap a picture, send it to them, and it just makes it easier on you versus having to upload different colors to your website. You can just have it readily available. Um, whether it be like a close family member, you can text a picture to them, or if you want to just send it through email for um, just a regular customer. But for this particular mat, I'm doing black, so I'm going to keep my design black, or I can just go back to a non fill color because I already know what color I'm going to paint it. So for cut purposes, I really don't need to fill my design with the color. So now I'm going to cut out my design, but before I do, I'm going to pause and do that, but I want to show you exactly how I do this. So I ungroup this. Don't worry about the alignment because once you get it on your mat, you can realign your design. I normally ungroup and cut the bottom half first. So I'll move it flushed up against the top of my, um, this is the part that's going to go into my silhouette machine. So I want it to be as close to the top as possible. And so I'll cut this part first and I'll cut the other part. And then I will be back, you guys, so we can get this painted on your mat. Okay, so I'm back, y'all, and I have my design cut out. So I have the top half and 
the bottom half. So now I'm going to show you how I put this on my mat. So I have my um, transfer tape applied to my design and I'm just going to eye this for now just for um, time purposes, but you would want to get your ruler and measure from side to side and make sure you have your design centered on the mat. But I've done enough of these that I can just pretty much kind of eye my design and um, tell whether or not it's centered. For the most part, I think it is centered. I think I have enough, the same amount of space on each side. So I'm just going to go with it. So I'm going to peel up my design off of my transfer tape. Well, off of the back. And I'm going to re-stick it. I normally like to do the top portion first. So I can be sure that I have the top portion up far enough on my mat. And if you want, for space purposes, um, since I'm recording, I'm going to... Well, no, I won't because I don't want it to throw off my design um, as far as knowing whether or not I'm straight across the top. And I'm bad at cutting straight, y'all, so I'm just going to leave it for now. But I'm going to back my mat up just a little bit so you can see. All right, that looks good. I'm going to leave it there. Before you peel up this transfer tape, you do want to grab the bottom half of your design and just kind of place it where you think you might want it to go so that you know whether or not you have enough space on the bottom for the bottom part. So, you just kind of fold this over and just to get it out of the way so I can kind of judge it and see whether or not I'm gonna have enough space so that way I know if I need to move my mat, I mean my top portion up. And I think I do because I'm gonna run a little close to the bottom of my mat. So I'm gonna take this and go up just a little bit more. close to the edges I can get it but not to the point where I'm almost running over so that way once I paint my design on I don't have my design running over the top of my mat and I think that will work but let me just double check you can never be sure because most of the time you'll think you got it right and then when you go to put the rest of it on your mat um, it's not gonna be right and then it's a whole entire mat that you've wasted. So I don't know if you can see that, but I think I have enough space at the bottom of my mat. All right, so let's get it done, y'all. Next, I'm just gonna peel my transfer tape up off of my design. Now, as I'm peeling this off, I generally like to stick this to my surface so that way it holds it in place for me as I'm um, going across the design so that way my design is not shifting as I'm pulling especially if you have like a newer transfer sheet that's really really sticky and hasn't lost its adhesive as much stick it to your surface and it stays in place then you don't have to worry about having a shifted design after you've um, painted your mat So now that we have our transfer tape filled up off of our design, we're going to go ahead and glove up and we're going to mask up because we don't want to get all of that stuff on our hands and we don't want to inhale those fumes. Um, so yeah, I got my mask. Got it on. Got me a nice set of clean gloves just so that I don't get all that stuff on my hands. I don't always use gloves, but I try to use them as much as I can, but I do try to make sure that I wear my mask. Now, just for a basic black mat, I always use Flex Seal. Um, I used to use acrylic paint, but I didn't really like the way that it left my mat looking. Sometimes it would look cracked. So I just use this. It's just easier, it's faster, and it looks better to me. You 
Now we're just gonna go ahead and put the bottom, the bottom portion on our mat and get it painted. All right, I have the bottom part of my mat on and once again, I'm gonna reapply my gloves just so that I don't get any sticky stuff on my hands once I remove the, the um, inner portion of the letters. to go in with my clear finish um this finish is one of the main ones that i use it just helps to seal and protect your mat um of course you want to tell your customer that the best way to um maintain the mat is to keep it in a dry a dry area so of course if it rains they may want to take their mat up and put it in a dry safe place if they want to maintain and have the mat for a while um but this just helps to seal your paint or your flex seal whatever you're using on your mat it helps to seal it into the mat it helps it um, basically to last longer and it helps with uh, discoloration um, if it's going to be sitting out in the sun. This is UV resistant so it's going to help with that um, and it doesn't cause your mat to yellow and it'll give it a glossy finish. This one's matte. I have another one that gives it a gloss finish. Um, sometimes I use both, sometimes I just use one. As it dries, it dries and this settles into the mat with the paint. All right, so that's it for today, y'all. I hope, I hope that this helped you all. Um, definitely don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll have plenty of more tutorials coming for you guys. Oh.